Engine to go, go, baby. What's good, guys? Yoku here. And Mommy Dami Kafka is finally here. Now, if I sound a little sick, my bad. Your boy got through traveling. I don't know what I got. The next five star lightning DPS character has officially dropped on the banner for the next three weeks, which means all of us are about to get dominated. Now, if you're just as excited as I am about what I just said, let me know in the comments down below. Don't flame your boy. I know that might be kind of weird. But before we actually have too much fun tonight, let me do my job and break down every Everything you need to know about Kafka and this ultimate free to play guide. Shoot on sight. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Mommy. <laughs> I mean, uh, Kafka has proven herself to be one of the most unique and challenging characters I've found myself testing before and even now. Now up front, I don't feel like I've truly understood everything this character had to offer. In fact, I think there's still way more that we can discover as she's coming out officially. She's got a great, powerful kit that focuses on damage over time mechanics, which can be utilized by herself or even better with the supporting team. And while the concept may seem simple, there's a few things that need to be explained to fully understand how much power this woman holds. Kafka's ultimate Twilight Trill is the bread and butter of her kit. You, you see how I started with her ultimate this time and not the basic attacker skill? That's because Kafka's own shock effect is actually unique to her. This ultimate deals lightning damage equal to a percentage of Kafka's attack to all enemies with a 100% base chance. Mind you, keep that in mind, guys. Base chance for those enemies to be shocked and immediately, not later on, not 12 turns later, immediately take damage from their current shock state equal to, uh, well, over 100% of its original damage. Now that's a lot of damage. Now I don't have to do the math on that. 100% of the original damage is whatever the hell you just did. Even better is that while shocked, enemies still receive lightning damage equal to 360% of Kafka's attack at the beginning of each turn and that specific shock state will last for two turns. So Kafka's ultimate is probably the most important piece of her kit because of these effects alone. The incredibly high damage multipliers on top of her unique ability to trigger this damage at will is broken. I mean, well, I guess it's kind of fair because she can only get this damage from using her ultimate, right? <laughs> Wrong. Kafka basically gets this type of damage every single turn for free. Mind you, everything that I just said is purely based on her doing her own thing. We all know characters like Sampo, Serval, and now Luca exist in this game. They have their own dedicated DOTs and what makes her ultimate even better is the Trace Torture. So now instead of just Kafka's shock DOT being triggered, she'll also trigger any other DOT applied to the enemy with her shock. Now I just gave you another form of detonating bombs on the enemy. Her talent, Gentle But Cruel, triggers that exact same ultimate specific shock to any one enemy your ally uses a basic attack on through a follow-up attack. That was a long sentence for my sick ass to be reading. I'm not going to do that anymore, but <laughs> you can only be triggered once per turn. And that makes perfect sense because it also lasts for two whole turns. You guys see the trend that's going on here with her shock states? This is a perfect passive talent for SP neutral type of characters like Luka, Branya, and Ting Yoon. Those type of characters that want to use their skill and then a basic attack right after that. Or maybe they want to get a little greedy and use two skills. Let's also not forget her technique. Mercy is not forgiveness, which actually sets you up to start the game with her ultimate shock status on all enemies immediately. And yes, it also lasts for two turns. So explaining the ultimate and the talent, it is now more apparent that she can apply damage over time on her own. So it's not like she needs another user to apply the DOT, but that doesn't really explain the insane damage we saw earlier. All of that damage comes from her skill, caressing moonlight. Now why she out here caressing moons, I don't know, but I'm not gonna question it because that's mommy Dami. Now this skill is weird, not like, like a bad weird, just a normal weird. I, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it does a buttload of damage and the initial hit it can 100% crit. So yeah, maybe you could run a crit build on Kafka, but uh, yeah. The damage multiplier itself is really strong too, but that's still not where the actual damage comes from. Kafka is the only character in the game that can force proc every other DOT on the enemy whenever she attacks. Now, for those that don't know some of these terms, force proc basically means that I can force this thing to happen at my will or on command. Normally, the way a damage over time mechanic functions is that at the beginning or end of this character or enemy or player's turn, there will be some damage applied to said health bar. Kafka specifically 
specifically ignores that mechanic. As I've explained in my Zila videos, as I've explained with Blade, Branya, any character that allows you to skip the mechanics, the in-game mechanics of whatever you're playing is broken. Any type of DOT will trigger nearly 100% of the original damage that it would have done immediately after Kafka uses her skill. The best part, my favorite part, and the thing that I made multiple videos on is the ability to not have the DOT disappear. The way we traditionally look at DOTs or damage over time, once the turn goes and passes, that ticker goes away, a turn has passed. So theoretically, or at least mechanically, the way it should work would be Kafka's proccing DOT and then it goes away. Thankfully, Poyoverse loves me and they might love you too, depending on your pulls, let me know. Her skill does not consume a turn like you would initially think, but instead continues to keep the full amount of turns that it would have originally lasted. Now we can get into the fact that her own light cone encourages you to boost her speed and you can just imagine how many times she'll proc a DOT per turn. Now don't fret, don't fret. Brothers and sisters of the Church of Kafka, I got you. I hate math, but I did the math for you. The short answer is that you need to hit about 165 to 189 for a speed set, depending on the cycles you're trying to clear. I'm going to explain that in the very next section. The reason I'm explaining it is because that's an incredibly high speed threshold to worry about. But with the new messenger relic set, as well as her own signature light cone, we've already done tests to prove that it's possible. It's just not the easiest achievement. Now with the basics of her kit explained without using my usual Pokemon poison reference, I can show you guys how to put it all into practice. Don't be afraid. Going into a little bit of what I mentioned earlier, Kafka's playstyle can be weird, but if you have a strong understanding of everything pertaining to her kid and what the other team members on the team do, it becomes a lot more clear. The basic principle behind piloting a Kafka team is that she is always the star, the leader, the dominant one, whatever you want to call her. Her damage is engineered by everyone else doing their job on the team. Harmony buffs Kafka to increase her own personal damage. A secondary Nihility unit applies the DOT and in the best case scenario also debuffs the enemy. This in turn increases the damage Kafka is going to be doing to said enemy. From there you start looking into specific stats. Both your Harmony and DOT applicator want to go before Kafka so that you don't waste her first skill. Yes you can use her technique but I'm going to assume you're going through cycles in MOC which in that case the technique would have only been applied at the beginning round. These particular characters want to move faster at, at least initially at the beginning of the round so that you will have both the harmony buff and DOT stacks at all times. Respectively, this is keeping her own signature light cone out of play for the concept of this. Adding light cones, different relic sets doesn't change the basic idea of how you want to perform her or rather how you use her, but it does change how she will perform within the team. Kafka's talent plays an incredibly important role here by taking advantage of someone like Luca or Sampo who will apply their DOT respectively after a basic attack. Specifically in Luca's case, he will need to use a skill or ultimate or basically have an enhanced basic attack before it can apply bleed without using a skill point. So not only will the enemy have bleeding or wind shear for instance, but they'll also receive her ultimate version of shock at the same time. Now that you've set up the board, it's time to start exploding on the enemy. Skill, talent, skill, ult, skill, skill, talent, ult, skill, rinse, cycle, repeat. That order isn't specific, I'm just saying it because it sounds cool. It's just making you more aware that with the combination of everything going on, she should always have her ultimate shock and whatever other DOTs existing on the enemy. That is, unless the enemy is cured of their debuffs, i.e. enemy version of Branya. Otherwise, there should never be a point in time after the first round that the enemies aren't layered in DOTs. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Congratulations. I am making my way through this guide little by little. Please applaud your boy because this is tough. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear it in my voice, but I am partially dying. We have made it to the relic section, which relics are actually pretty easy here. Unlike my blade guide, I wanted to skip out on the damage testing this time because to be frank, she didn't really need to have her damage tested. The damage itself wasn't my main concern once I actually understood how I wanted to play Kafka. In short, 
support detonate bombs as much as possible. So instead of breaking them down based on what did the most damage, I listed them in which were better for the situation. The best quote unquote main stat won't typically change on anything except for the boots and maybe the rope attack percent on the body speed or attack percent on the boots definitely want a lightning percent damage orb however if you have a really strong attack percent orb you can do it and i'll explain the difference here momentarily finally you want the attack percent or break effect rope the rope is purely dependent on if you want Kafka doing all the breaking or someone else like Silverwolf and Sushong. The slight detail for the damage percent orb. I understand that attack percent orb might or will drop a lot more frequently than lightning percent and you will still be able to do a good chunk of damage. The main thing to point out here is that you don't get lightning damage in your gear. It, it doesn't exist anywhere else besides the orb. So you could skip it, go for more attack percent, and then try and shoot up to a five to six, or maybe even seven K if you're lucky to get that attack stat incredibly high. And that might just be its own unique overpowered build. However, you still don't get lightning percent anywhere else within your gear. The orb is the only place to get almost a 50% lightning damage increase from the gear. With that in mind, your four piece band of sizzling thunder set will be the most common. It's strong, it's straight to the point, and it increases her damage output without any outstanding conditions. On this set, you'll definitely want speed boosts at least up to a certain speed. There are thresholds that a lot of us know by now, but I'll save the specific details on that for another video. For now, 134 is typically your go-to. If you start involving Asta or you have some crazy good luck on some speed subsets, then we can look into some other factors along the way. But for right now, shoot for 134. Her next best option, and the one that I had the most fun with, was the two-piece lightning and two-piece messenger. You keep the extra lightning damage bonus, which I believe is 10%, but now you're trading 20% more attack for more speed. The higher you can naturally get her speed, the more impactful that 6% speed increase will be. Because of this, now you can fiddle around with the attack percent boots that I talked about earlier, and you can choose to stay around 134, which will give you double actions in the first turn and I believe the third turn after that as well. Or you can shoot for something crazy like what I did and max baby moms out to 170 plus speed. That way you basically have double actions every single turn without including any other outside influence like advancing actions. If your Kafka can strike two, possibly three times a turn, then you're easily dishing out an absurd amount of damage in between cycles like nobody's business. I'm a firm believer, and I actually did it, that attacking more often completely nullifies the loss that you would have from the 20 percent attack increase with the band of sizzling thunder four piece set and as i said before it really depends on the speed threshold and how many cycles you're aiming for oftentimes when we're going through moc we find ourselves clearing one side maybe faster than the other usually that side on average is three to four turns at a high it's about seven to eight cycles and then you can successfully get your three star clears so I'm basing these speed numbers on how many actions or how much speed I need in order to double the actions within six turns, seven turns, eight turns, or even four turns. And if you look at the chart that I had on screen, you can see that those numbers fluctuate heavily. Finally, your last couple of options come down to convenience or personal preference. The four piece quantum set is pretty interesting, but to get full advantage of this set, you either need Silver Wolf on the team at all times, or the enemy has to naturally be weak to quantum. I don't think it's bad, but I definitely think it's more situational than the other two sets, and I wouldn't personally go out of my way to do that unless I just happen to have Silver Wolf on my Kafka team at all times, which I typically don't. The two piece Musketeer plus Lightning, or even even the messenger set can work as an option too because of the 12% attack increase. But at that point, you would just pick a four piece lightning set, right? As I said before, it's pure convenience. If you have more musketeer pieces, by all means, pump her up with Musketeer. If you have more lightning pieces that are better, pump her with that. And if you've been farming for Blade or just Bronya and Harmony characters in general to use the Messenger set, go ahead and try that out too. When it comes to her light cones, it's also fairly simple to explain. And I'm going to use, roughly speaking, the same concept or ideology that I had with the relics. I'll break this down into a free to play, gotcha, and five star options. For free to plays, the best option that I found out was Hermata. With the ability for anyone to get this light cone, just by playing Forgotten Hall, you can easily superimpose this to S5 and receive a 32% damage increase to enemies with shock or wind shear across the board. Plus, 
you also get a 32% extra break effect, which now allows you to dip into a hybrid damaging plus breaking monster type of Kafka. For the gotcha four star light cones, good night and sleep well is her best option, getting another 36% damage increase on any enemy you attack just for them having three debuffs stacked onto them is both ridiculous and easy on a Kafka team. As I mentioned before, after that first round, enemies are always stacked with debuffs. Finally, for your five star options, her best in slot in general, 100% free, easy, is going to be her own signature light cone. Patience is all you need. Which, it's kind of funny, the name of this cone is called Patience, but the effect itself makes it so that Kafka just blitzes the enemy with speed and damage buffs anyway. She also gains a new DOT named Erode, which still counts as shock for all the other tech space needs of your kit, but it also still counts as its own debuff. So her ultimate shock is not the same shock as a road, but will be detonated with all the other DOTs anyway. It's purely nasty stuff. Next would be in the name of the world, Welt's signature light cone. This can make for a great alternative that's also possibly free if you didn't use your starlight on tickets every chance you got. But I'm not here to flame or blame anybody. There's still the off chance you pulled it from standard or lost the 50-50. The cool thing about this one is that it doesn't actually have any restrictions of needing the enemy to hold a specific buff or a specific debuff my bad you just get a 24 percent damage increase for any debuff period that that literally means any debuff while also increasing your skills effect hit rate and your actual attack percent by 24 percent why did i say percent twice you know what it's cool I'm gonna let it rock. No matter how you slice it, Kafka has some amazing light cone options across the board. You quite literally cannot go wrong with building this character. You would have to go out of your way to make her not do the damage you're looking for. Shoot on sight. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Kafka's team comps isn't as restrictive as a lot of people might think. She can function completely on her own in a standard team comp and still get solid damage. If you want more damage, then you can open up a few other routes to get to the goal. As a disclaimer, I'd highly suggest playing around with whatever you have built up first, or at least plan to build up, instead of trying to get every single Kafka team possible or the absolute best Kafka team. Remember, this is night one, week one. Yes, we've tested some things, but there are tons of other theory crafters and players who have different experiences and may come up with something new. I like Kafka the Hedgehog, you might not. Just play with the builds. That said, I got you on some team comp examples that I found the most success with during my character testing. First up is the standard Kafka team, Buff My Mommy. You, you, you like that name? Yeah, I know you do. This team's entire purpose is to buff Kafka as much as possible. For this, you want Ting Yun. 100%. There's almost no debating it here because of what Ting Yun offers alone. Good attack buff, damage buff on her ult, and energy restoration for Kafka's ultimate. She's also SP positive as heck, which gives Kafka more detonations to trigger. Her using basic attacks in between her skills is great too because you'll guarantee trigger Kafka's follow-up attack every turn. You could make a case for Branya or Yukong. Both of those options were good for me and specifically with Branya, I was actually able to completely negate the need for speed on Kafka. That's a video game. How did I come up with that on the fly? Regardless, this pretty much guaranteed that I get two to three detonations per turn since I only focused on getting Bronya's speed above being 150. You, you guys don't have Bronya though, right? Third on the team would be another Nihility character, but specifically Pela or Silverwolf. I preferred Silverwolf since I was single targeting bosses anyway, but Pela works too. The goal is to drop the enemy's defense as often and as low as possible while using your harmony unit to buff Kafka's damage output on her own. Last of course, any sustain can work here, but I was personally a bigger fan of shielders because they could draw aggro away as much as possible from both Ting Yun and Kafka. It's simple, it's clean, and because most of us already have these units built up, it'll let us start playing Kafka as soon as possible. Now I know some of you might be thinking, bro, Asta, like literally, you're just not gonna talk about Asta, the best Harmony character in the game, and relax. Asta is a special case. I recently had a stream where chat forced me to build her and showed me the ways of this girl, and yes, Afka's specific attack percent increase as well as her flat 36 speed from the ult can significantly 
help Kafka during those active turns. When those buffs aren't active, Asta kinda doesn't matter to Kafka. The flat speed buff alone will help you achieve what I mentioned earlier, shooting for that 165 to 189 range, depending on how many double actions you want per X cycle. I like Asta, I really do. I think she helps cheat the system for Kafka, but I don't like that you basically need Adelons for Asta to consistently do this without causing issues. The next team is probably my favorite to play, the most common you'll see recommended, and the most confusing time I've had trying to understand what the hell was going on. Kafka. Ting Yun, the DOT applicator, and Sustain. This section of the team can be whichever unit you want to use. Hook, Himiko, Luka, Sampo, or even Serval. I had the most fun and fastest clears with Sampo, but Luka is probably the one that was the most interesting to me. It's one of the strongest DOTs in the game, but I still need more time with this character before I fully understand and can explain why I do or don't like him more than Sampo. Both of them have this unique trait in their ultimate ability to amplify the damage of DOTs by at least 20%. Not only do they apply the DOTs for Kafka to take full advantage of, but they double as both a debuffer and sub DPS because you kind of need both of them to be maxed out. Whichever one of them will be doing the breaks needs to be level 80, bring out the most of their damage. Talents need to each be at least level 8 and the respective stats need to be as high as possible in order to maximize each opportunity for damage. So it's not exactly what everyone believed about Kafka needing every DOT on one team, but it's not something that's so free to play every one of their mama can do it day one. You have to max these characters out. It's it's actually a crazy high investment to ask of anyone to do, especially if you didn't already prepare. And unfortunately for my last team, I don't have any footage of this team. My Sushong wasn't built for a hybrid break build, but I would like to make her an honorary mention alongside the standard team I mentioned before. Instead of focusing purely on buffing Kafka, you can build a team consisting of Kafka, Asta, Sushong and a sustain. Because Sushong is already a break efficient monster, it will be more expected for her to initiate breaks on enemies quickly thanks to her speed and thus putting a bleed stack onto them. Kafka goes a couple times after that while Sushong focuses on breaking the next target and boom, you have bloody shocks popping all over the screen. These are the type of teams I would personally recommend that have the most dominant performances for the least amount of investment possible. I know the triple DOT thing sounds cool, trust me, but I genuinely don't feel like it's anywhere near the best option for her. That could change in the future if some crazy discovery is found by one of you with a 10k attacking Kafka who just obliterates everything on the screen without the need to heal or shield herself. Shoot on sight. <laughs> Don't be afraid. At E0, Kafka is a complete character for herself. Let me repeat that, for herself. You don't need any other constellations in order for her to get the bombing job done. That being said, if your goal is to further future-proof her and create an irreplaceable unit within the DOT comp forever, you might wanna look at some of these Adelons. E1 increases the DOT received by a target up to 30% after her follow-up attack is triggered. This is good stuff. Even crazier damage multipliers now really helps steal the kill. Fortissimo, for for Fortissimo, for Fortissimo. Y'all, y'all know me. All right, stop. <laughs> Please don't step on me. This is her E2. I love the name and I love the ability. It increases the DOT dealt by all allies by 25%. Yes, this includes her. This is the Adelon you want to push for in order to make her more of a team player. Now, E4 is cool or whatever, uh, at least for what it's worth. Recit recitat oh my gosh, bro. I'm sick. Why are you making me pronounce these things? Hoyoverse, please. Resuscitating dead bodies eliminates any thoughts of energy issues anyone would have had by giving her an additional two energy each time a shocked enemy takes damage. But the price is costly. This is an E4. Finally, E6, Lego my ego, 
This Eidolon is actually cracked. The damage multiplier for her ultimate shock and follow-up attack increases by a tremendous 156% and extends the duration of shock by another turn. They're even more permanently stuck with DOTs now. You don't need this, and I would highly recommend stopping at E2. But as per usual, if any of you wind up with an E6 Kafka, or you, you maybe just want to fund your boy's pulls to get E6, please don't hesitate to slide in my DMs. I'm trying to experience pure domination from mommy. All right, that's it. Uh, everyone, pack your bags because class is over. I've taught you everything you need to know about Kafka from a beginner level all the way up to slightly advanced. She's an amazing character that I rightfully think is comparable to the current top DPS characters being both Blade and Zila. Don't think for a second though that Kafka isn't a high investment character, by the way. She is. In fact, I feel like all lightning characters are just high investment at this point, but the difference between her and some other units is that it feels appropriately rewarding for how much investment you to dump into her. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and share the video, comment what you plan on doing with your own Kafka team and share with any of your friends who wanna learn more about building Kafka. If you wanna see more content like this, please consider subscribing as it's the only way YouTube will let me see my kids again. I can't say my user outro because it's inappropriate. <laughs> I want you to know that it literally took me an hour just to record this. I, I think I'm sick. I'm dying. Someone help.